Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'm going to talk about the three problems and four issues with the new Nokia 3.1. Now the first major problem with this phone would be the lack of a fingerprint scanner. Nowadays, phones that cost even around 5000 rupees like the 10 D also come with a fingerprint scanner. While this phone which is priced at 10,000 rupees still doesn't come with a fingerprint scanner. Now it is definitely not a major issue, it's more about inconvenience. Now the second major problem with this phone would be the lack of performance. This phone sports a MediaTek MT6750 processor with 2GB of RAM. Now for a phone that's priced around 7000 rupees or 8000 rupees, that would have been understandable. But for a phone that's priced around 10,000 rupees, that's definitely not acceptable. Even if we look at the competition like the Redmi Note 5, Realme 1, Redmi Y2, this phone is lacking seriously in terms of performance. Now the third major problem with this phone would be the low storage. Now this phone comes with just 16 GB of internal storage out of which you get about 7 GB of free space for your user apps and user data. If you are a very basic user who just uses WhatsApp and YouTube, then this might not be an issue. But if you want to install more applications or even games, your storage will run out and your phone will become slow and your phone will trouble you a lot. Once again, if we consider the competition, for the price, Nokia should have given us 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB of storage at the very least. Now those were the major problems and you can also consider them as the reasons not to buy the Nokia 3.1. Now coming to some minor issues, this phone has huge bezels at the top and bottom. Now this phone has the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio, so it's taller and fits comfortably in the hand. Now usually brands do that to give you smaller bezels, but with Nokia 3.1, they give you a regular sized phone with huge bezels and the new 18 to 9 aspect ratio. So the design simply doesn't make any sense. Next, this phone comes with a smaller 3000 mAh battery. Now for a basic user or a very normal user, it might be sufficient. But while other brands are offering 4000 or even 5000 mAh battery at similar price range, you are still getting a smaller battery. Now the next issue has to do with this charger. Now in their website, they mentioned that this phone comes with a 10W charger. But in the box, we just got a 5W charger. So it will take almost twice the amount of time to charge the phone completely. So even in terms of charging speed, it is pretty slow. Next, there is no portrait mode. Now portrait mode has been a trend for a long time now. Phones come with dual camera setup on the rear and some phones even come with dual camera setup on the front. This phone doesn't come with anything like that and it doesn't even offer you portrait selfies which is completely software based. Now coming to the major issue, it would be the price. Now irrespective of what this phone has to offer, pricing is really bad. In the same price segment, we have many better alternatives like the Realme 1 which offers you bigger battery, bigger display, even the Oppo A3s which gives you the notch display just like the iPhone 10. So guys, just like all the previous Nokia phones, even this phone is overpriced and misses a lot of things that other brands are offering. So guys, with all that said, will you still consider buying this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Mikhil from Greedy Tech signing off, have a nice day.